everybody, it's Mr. Pickard in here. Today, we continue on about Manifest Destiny. Today, we talk about the Lewis and Clark Expedition. We'll remind you, Manifest Destiny. Manifest Destiny is this idea that people back then in the 1800s and nowadays we're obsessed with land. Land equals money, which equals power and authority. Land equals the ability to put up farms and animals and stores and homes or whatever on that land and to make money off of that, all right? Remember the Native Americans were here first, but in the early 1800s, the US government was like, we're gonna make this country a big, enormous, rich, powerful country. And that's what happened, all right? So, Manifest Destiny, Americans' obsession with land, because land equals money, which equals power. People literally thought in the early 1800s that God wanted the United States of America to be this big, powerful country, and that people had the right to go either buy or steal or take that land. All right, manifest destiny, American's obsession with land. All right, still to this day, I bet you a lot of you out there would someday like to buy a nice fancy mansion for yourself or for your family or whatever, all right? That's a modern day version of manifest destiny, okay? All right, on to history. We talked uh, before about the Louisiana Purchase. Now in the early 1800s, this guy, Mr. Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States of America, bought from France and Napoleon for $15 million, basically the middle chunk of what is now the United States of America, the Louisiana Purchase, all right? After Thomas Jefferson buys the Louisiana Purchase, he decides to have a group of people go out and explore all this land, see what the heck is out here. People have tried to do that before. People have tried to do this before, but oftentimes they never came back alive. So he picks these two guys, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, and they get a group together of about 30 people, including um, an African-American gentleman named York. Remember, there was slavery in the southern bottom states at this time. Also, um, along the way, they pick up a French fur trapper named Chabernou, who has a young wife named Sacagawea. It is said that her name possibly might have been Sacagawea, but over the past 200 years, it's been changed to Sacagawea. Anyway, they just, Lewis and Clark decided to have her come along to be an interpreter, and they figured that Native Americans wouldn't attack them if they brought along a young Native American woman. Anyway, the, oh, by the way, too, random fact, they also brought with them a dog. A large, big, hairy, cute, black Newfoundland dog. If you get the chance, you should Google Newfoundland dog and hit search and go to images. You'll see this big, huge, cute dog that they brought with them. But anyway, Lewis and Clark, they took off. Their instructions were to go as far out west till they got to the ocean. And it was a scientific expedition. They were supposed to write down in their journals everything they saw and and their dealings with Native Americans and what kind of animals they saw. Believe it or not, people on the eastern side of the United States of America had never seen prairie dogs before. So Lewis and Clark were the first people ever to come over here from the eastern states that saw prairie dogs. And write down, you know, how to get out to what is now Oregon. It was not an easy trip. Uh, they walked and traveled and sailed for 863 days. They, made, they voyaged over 7,600 miles, grand total. A lot. I don't even really like walking a mile. It's from 1804 to 1806, only one guy on the whole trip died. Appendix burst. And they weren't able to remove his appendix in time, and his name was Captain Twitty. But only one person died on the whole trip, which 
Thomas Jefferson actually thought it was a miracle that only one of them died. Once they got out to what is now Oregon, they got out to what is now Astoria, Oregon, saw the ocean, created a little fort called Fort Clatsop, and stayed there for the winter. They, they wrote in their journals that they thought Oregon was this cold, wet, depressing place during wintertime. Also, um, when they went back, they did have to deal with a lot of other things. Like, for example, at one point they got chased by bears. Um, there were some Native Americans that were curious, and there was one Native American tribe that almost wanted to have them killed. Well, Sacagawea was like, no, 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 no. Everybody calm down. When they made up, they made it back. It was considered a huge success, and it inspired a lot of people later on in the 1800s that were living on the East Coast to consider moving out West. The Oregon Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, the Mormon Trail, the California Gold Rush. Basically, this movement of people from the Eastern states out to the Western states, including possibly some of your ancestors. These people that came out here were tough. They were brave, they were risk takers, they wanted to help their families, and they were strong and did whatever they had to do to help their families. So, yeah, anyway, again, the expedition was a huge success, although, sad ending to the story that I bet you didn't hear about when you were in elementary school. Um, after the Lewis and Clark expedition was over, Lewis, Meriwether Lewis, he fell into a state of deep depression, and um, he was an alcoholic. He had one night, drank too much alcohol, and ended up committing suicide, killed himself. So not everything about history is all happiness and wonderfulness and happy endings. In social studies and history, there's oftentimes some sad endings, but... You need to know the truth. You need to know our history, all right? So we can learn from the mistakes in the past and the good things from the past. So hopefully next generation, future generations of Americans can make this place even better, all right? So uh, yeah, a little bit about the Lewis and Clark expedition, the Corpse of Discovery, all right? So uh, yeah, that's it for today. Um, hope you're all doing well. Oh. People have been uh, sending some comments to me through Google Classroom about my hair. No, I do not have coronavirus. I decided to shave my head. So, yeah. Anyway, um, hope you're doing well. Big day today. Wash your hands. Don't pick your nose. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye, everybody.